beautiful country and I just thank you for allowing me to come tonight and to speak to all of you. And uh, it's really not uh, about me. This is not about me at all. This is about God and what God has done in my life. Uh, and I really just want to give him the credit. Uh, my name is Veronica. I live in South Florida uh, with my family. I have a husband. I've been married 25 years and I have three children. I have a son and two daughters. Um, I want to give you a little bit, when I think about my testimony, I kind of have to go back to the beginning because I thought we're constantly having new testimonies. As we walk with the Lord, God's always doing a new thing in our life and he's constantly doing things where uh, we have a testimony of his greatness in our lives. But I thought it would be appropriate if I went back to the beginning because then you would have understanding on how things unfolded. I am the oldest of four children. My mother had me at 16. My father was 18. And my mother had four children by the time I was 21. My mother was raised without parents. My mom was about 26 when she met her father. And I think I was about 10. So I know uh, what that's like. Um, also, I wanted to mention that my father prior to marriage to my mother, he had been in prison. And the reason I tell you that is that I want you to understand that I come from a background of brokenness. Our families were not whole. They weren't what you think. It was a difficult time of just brokenness. I tell my children, broken people create broken people. But God heals and he makes us whole. Amen. Um, one of the things I want to just say is because I was the oldest of four children, I was, uh, there was a lot of responsibility, and I became very angry as a child. Anger was a very, very normal emotion for me. I was always angry. I just had that little bit of a chip on my shoulder and just felt like, hmm. And so that anger began to brood in me, and what it produced in me was full-blown rebellion. I was a very rebellious teenager, and I, I feel for my mom because I, I gave her a, a hard time. But uh, uh, through my life, it drove her closer to the Lord, which was a blessing. But because of my rebellion, I, I chose to run away from home. I didn't want to live under the rules of my family and especially uh, my mother and so I had a very difficult time and so I decided to run away and of course I didn't want to run away by myself so I talked a friend into running away with me which we did and it was uh, I was living in New Jersey at the time it was very cold and I remember that my it was in the middle of March and it was a very 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 cold time in New Jersey and I remember my legs were frozen I remember that I wasn't able to, I couldn't feel him anymore. And I remember at one point I woke up my friend and I said to her, Kristen, I'm going to go home because I can't feel my legs anymore. And so that night I went home and I went into the lower level of our house and I slept there until the next morning. The next morning my dad woke up and he said to me to go to my room. I went up to my room and I expected my parents to uh, really... Uh, discipline me and, and show the wrath of God on me, but that's not what I received. At that time, my mom came into my room and she sat beside me, and that was very different because we didn't have that kind of relationship. We had a very uh, hostile stuff, um, and so she shared with me. I said, she said to me, "This is the question she asked me, and this is so profound." She said, "Why did you come home?" And I said to her, Mom, my legs were broke. I felt like I couldn't feel them anymore. And you know what she said to me? I've been praying for you. And she began to share a story with me, and I'm going to read it to you. It's in the book of Luke, and it's where Jesus talks of a, in a parable. And he says, suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. Does he not leave the ninety-nine and go after the one? And... and until he finds it. And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulders and he goes home. And then he calls his friends and his neighbors together and he says, Rejoice with me! I have found my lost sheep! That was that lost sheep. And my mom said to me, Ron, when the big shepherd, when the great shepherd goes after the sheep, he breaks their legs and he puts them on their shoulders 
and he takes them home. And it was during that time that I remember my mom saying that you're his child and you're rebelling, you're resisting God. And I knew she was right. I knew she was right. And I repented. I remember crying and saying to the Lord, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for resisting you. Shortly after that, though, I wish that I could stand here and say that my life with God was just wonderful and that I obeyed. But I can't say that. Right after that, I was 14 years old. I met my husband. And that was a blessing. But um, shortly after that, uh, we dated for about three years. And then my parents decided to break me up. Uh, break us up. They knew that we were too involved and too sexually active and so they didn't feel that that was a good thing and so my mom uh, thought that we should break up and it was during this time where I began to really uh, I just want to say that I never had a Bible that was one thing I don't remember having and I didn't really have anyone discipling me and I didn't really know God's word but you know shortly after breaking up with my boyfriend my, my husband now I had a broken heart because I loved him and I couldn't be with him. And I was filled with hurt and pain. And I didn't understand why we couldn't be together. And you know what I learned about a broken heart? We will fill it with something or someone. And that's exactly what I did. I filled my broken heart with things that were not of God. I filled my broken heart with another person. A person that was not godly. That didn't care about me. And wanted to uh, have his way. Shortly after, I found myself pregnant, and I had an abortion. I murdered my first child, my firstborn. It was a very difficult time in my life, and I was struggling. After that decision, it was a cycle of sin for me. I would confess my sins to God. I knew He'd forgive me, but I would forget. And I would fit, continually fall into the pit and just continually confess and ask God to forgive me, and then I would forget. And it was a cycle of sin that I couldn't get out of, and I was just cycling in and out. And before I knew it, I was about 21 years old, and I was sick of my sin. I was sick of it. I was sick of it. That was when I prayed to God, and I just, I wanted to go home, and I remember I was, I was a prodigal child, I wanted to go home, and I asked, I went home. And I remember saying to my mom, you know, you broke me up. Can you get me back together with, with my first love? And she said, you know, Ron, I don't have the power to do that. But you know what we can do? We can pray. And at that day, we sat on the curb and we prayed to the God in heaven that if it was his will that we would get to back together, that he would bring us. And he did. He did. Shortly after, he came back into my life after five years. After five years, he came back into my life. We have a God in heaven who answers prayer. And he answered that prayer. And God brought him back into my life. Shortly after, he was living in Florida and I was in New Jersey. And I flew down there and we spent time. And I remember saying, I'm not the same girl. I said, I want to live for God this time. I want to do it God's way, not my way. And you know what he said? So do I. And so praise God for that. I went back down and I told him about my sin. I confessed it to him. And I thought that was it. And then I was going to move on and get married and be happily ever after. But you know what? I never talked about my shame, my sin, the secret sin. I knew God forgave me, but I wasn't willing to confess it publicly. Although I was forgiven, I wasn't free. It is for freedom that Christ had set us free. And that's what I wanted to walk in. I desired it, but I didn't know how to do it. And so it was, it was I, I'm going to read from uh, Psalm 32 because I really, this resonates so much with me. It says, when I kept silent, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night, your hand was heavy upon me. My strength was sapped as in the heat of summer. Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not cover up my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord. And you forgave the guilt of my sin. See, I couldn't get away from that guilt. It was heavy. It was constantly on my mind and on my conscience. Psalm 32, verses 
three through five. And I couldn't get away from that guilt. And it wasn't through until a, a series of trials. And when I tell you, there's no easy way into the kingdom of God. It's through suffering. I would be lying to you to stand before you and say, that is easy. It's not easy. But you have to know that the hardest things in life are the best things. You know, we often say, I want to know Christ. I want to know the power of His resurrection. But my question to you is, are you willing to share in the fellowship of His sufferings? It was through suffering that I came to know the power of His resurrection. Then I knew Christ. And I want to tell you that God, through trials and suffering, and I would take all night to share in my wilderness experience, all I know is that God humbled me. He humbled me. And I praise Him for that. But it was through that, you know, I, I wanted to band-aid my pain. I had a band-aid on it. And I was like, I didn't want to take that thing off. Because you know what? When you have a band-aid on it, it hurts to allow the, 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 to be exposed. And you know what? I was holding on to that for dear life. And I was holding on. And I was doing the God thing. And I was in church. I was doing the God thing. But you know what? There comes a day when God says, we need to open up that wound and allow the healing of the light of the truth to come in and heal us and set us free. Set us free. And so that is that is what I came here to testify to. You know, when he sets us free, we are free indeed. I want you to know, though, that I know my sin. My sin is ever before me. And when the psalmist said that, he meant it is on his eyelids. And I praise God for my sin because it has kept me humble before my Lord. And I said, I thank him every day for humbling. And it's gone. I have no more shame. I have no more guilt. Christ has, has covered with my sin through the blood of Jesus Christ. And he can do that for you. One of my favorite scriptures is in Hebrews. And it says, for the worshipers. Are you a worshiper? That's what I want to know. Would have been cleansed once for all. And would no longer have feel guilty for their sins. That is my testimony. I have no guilt and no shame because my Savior bore them on the cross for His glory and His name's sake. So my question to you is, I don't know what your secret shame is, but I know my Jesus can handle it. And it's His desire that you would be free. He came to give us life and life abundant. Don't settle for anything less than the abundant life in Christ. Confess your sins while there's time and receive the healing of the Word of God. It's medicine to our bones. So I just want to praise Him and I thank you for allowing me to testify to God's faithfulness. I wasn't faithful. He was faithful. And He'll be faithful in your life too. Bring Him your shame. Bring Him your, your trials. There's nothing, nothing He won't forgive. Amen. Thank you, sister. All right. <laughs>